Welcome to another episode of Prattle with Trey Vane for connoisseurs of casual conversation. Each week, my guests and I will chit chat about an obsession of theirs that captures their interest and their soul. And this week, I'm not here to make friends because I'm here for the right reasons. And at the end of the day, I'm real. Let's go. There are people that you know, and there are people that are a part of you. Tyler Leach has known me since I was 18 and has known me through every era of my adult life. She is a labor and delivery nurse, a doula, birth rights advocate, scholar, hot girl, twerk team captain, super sag, and lover girl. Please welcome Tyler Leach to Prattle. Welcome. Thank you so much for coming on. Honestly, that was one of the best descriptions of me I've ever heard in my life. One of the greatest joys of this podcast is getting to introduce your beautiful friends. And I was like, I was like, what am I going to say about Tyler? Because like, Tyler was my absolute first friend post high school. And I also went to a school from the fourth grade to high school, right? Fourth grade to 12th grade. So it was like a big, it was a big deal. You were like my first friend post high school. So I was like, what am I going to say? But I was like, I should just be real. Also, I wonder. I want to address the elephant in the room. Ty, it's 10 p.m., 10, 13. <laughs> Tyler goes, we should, like, hang out before. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, we should pregame. So Girl. I'm drunk. She's not. We I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm close, babe. <laughs> we were supposed to be, but she was, like, sipping like a little girl. So It's I, here. Hold on. Please hold. <laughs> she, she did bring a drink. She we're tapped in, sisters. If you're listening and you don't have the video, by the way, please check us out on YouTube. Oh, I just hit that mic. Okay. <laughs> There's a there's a lot going on in this episode, but it's a really exciting time. Um, welcome so much to being on Prattle. You, you deserve to have a mic in front of your face more than almost anyone I know. Oh, my God. You know what's going on. You shouldn't have told me that because I'm literally never going to stop talking, so it's wonderful. Y'all, you heard it here first. Tyler's podcast is launching <laughs> next launching week. 2024. <laughs> We're coming. Also, Mom, if you're watching this and you see me hit my vape, just ignore it. Hi, like, Avis. I love you. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> I love you. So much, but we have known each other for going on since 2014. So yeah. literally next year will be a decade. Crazy. A decade. Spooky Yuki, in fact. That's beautiful. We're we're really going through it. Like we've seen, like, Tyla has been there <laughs> first kiss. We're losing my virginity. Like every milestone you can think of. Because I didn't do anything until I went to college. So everything uh -huh. else you can think of, Tyler's been there for it. And that's, like, she's so beautiful. I know. Yeah. I love that. And I remember when I met, okay, I have to tell this story. Because when I met Tyler, so we are part, we were part of the same. Scholarship group. Yeah, scholarship group. So we met before we went to college, right? So, like, we met, like, a little mini student's day. And I remember meeting her, and I was like, wow, she's so cool. And she would never be my friend because I'm not that cool. And you really were. And you also, Tyler was also my, like, sunken place awakening. <laughs> Girl, <laughs> I had to get you out. I had to literally drag you out of the sunken place by my claws. I went to a very beautiful school. Amazing school with incredible opportunity, like, from the fourth grade to the fourth grade. It just happened to be very, 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 very straight and very, very, very white. So when I got to NYU, I was, like, very much, I don't know. Unversed in blackness, who who's to say what I was? But Tyla, but like you weren't. That's the thing because like your mom is like very like my mom is. She's a real. Your mom's like, that my mom's girl. Real. My your mom mom's is real. that. My girl. mom's real. She's very black. Um, but that, I think you just like were accustomed to like adjusting to people's expectations of you as like a black man who is like that's beautiful and profound. Oh wow, thank you so much. And it's also like that's so true. And also it's like growing up in that school. Like again, I had the best time in that school. But it is like. There was one year where, I guess I'll tell the story of the year we had Black History Month lunch, and we had a great food program at my school. And they thought that it would be a good idea for Black History Month to have, first of all, oven fried chicken. If you're going to be racist, put Do that it right. shit in some lard. <laughs> some hot like, fucking deep grease. Fry that if you're going to be racist. <laughs> Um, and there was watermelon for dessert, peach cobbler, and I remember specifically they changed out the drink machine to add a grape juice. Like, I remember that so clearly, and I remember I was complaining about it. I was I was in the line for the food complaining about it, and our uh, Latin teacher was a dick. He turned around, he was like, well, I, 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 was, I was saying, like, this Black History Month food is bad because it's, like, racist, and the Latin teacher turns around, white, obviously, and he goes, well, this is what slaves ate. 
excuse, I didn't know that being black is intrinsically being a slave. I know that happened. It's a very big part of black American history. I'm very knowledgeable about that, but that's a crazy thing to say. So that wasn't was, even the one I was talking about. And that's the crazy part is that there's oh more God. than Wait, one. More than I'm just talking about the one where they made y'all pick cotton. Oh! <laughs> So imagine you go to a private school. You're in Virginia, famously the heart of the Confederacy. <laughs> and it was the seventh grade. My teacher was like, okay, we're learning about slavery, right? Which was like a big deal. That sounded so insensitive and crazy, but I, I just meant like, it was a big deal to learn about this because it was mostly a white class. And for some reason, they thought it was a great idea to <laughs> teach slavery through... <laughs> participation, interaction, competition. And they, I don't know how they procured this, but my school, my white Episcopalian <laughs> private school procured bales of unprocessed cotton. Cotton still in the, by the way, cotton grows in a demon plant. It's like a hard husk that has literal spikes. It's awful. And my school procured a bunch of those and they said, okay, everyone, we're gonna like learn how to pick cotton in class. In the idea of thinking of like to empathize with slaves, what it turned into is like a bunch of rich white people picking cotton in air conditioning classrooms <laughs> of a private school in Virginia. <laughs> and and um, yeah, it just went as badly as you thought. In my class, one guy was like, he was done picking cotton. He turned to this Afro Latina in the class and he goes, I'm so over this. Miss Thing, you didn't call her Miss Thing, but I'm saying names, but Miss Thing, please pick my cotton. And in the other class, they made it a competition, which is so funny, like not funny, funny is the wrong word, but like so Horrible. ridiculous that they would make a competition. And in that class, a black student won, which is like, you gotta throw, like if you're ever- Throw the comp, any sister. any black person out there, if you ever find yourself in a cotton picking competition- Throw the comp. I'm sorry, you gotta throw it. <laughs> and he didn't, and he won. And then another white student was like, of course he won, it's in his DNA. Hmm. So that's where <laughs> that's how I was growing up. And then I met Tyla and she was like, bitch, you're black, you're lit, and you're liberated. And I was like, you're I, so feel right. that. I feel that. You're like kind. I'm so kind. And um in with showing like me my beautiful blackness and with educating me all about that, one of our favorite pastimes at NYU was watching reality TV, which mm. is our topic today, which I am I can't describe to you how excited I was when you're like, let's talk about reality TV because I love sister. I feel like that's one of the first TV. things that we bonded on is like, I like distinctly remember us like sitting and me being like, there's a new season of the real world out and making you watch it because you were not a real world girly. I and I also distinctly, you remember me, remember you showing me the most racist season of Big Brother that ever existed. <laughs> and me being like, I'm never watching this show again because this was actually traumatizing. And you being like, yeah. For anybody out there, Big Brother 15 is the most important, one of the most important pieces of media that we have in our time. I agree. It was a gorgeous, gorgeous is the wrong word, but <laughs> it is perfect. A, a perfect microcosm of everything that our country has wrong with it today. Like it was a season of, racism, sexism, like overt, right? And I just feel like it's like, if you ever have the time, and Big Brother's a lot. It's yeah. four, three episodes a week or something. It's like it's, almost as much as Love Island. Which, right. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to get into all of that. Um, And so like in this BB15, right? You you will see like how racism, class, like all of it manifests in our day-to-day -day lives. And I, I think it was really beautiful. And I, I literally did like a presentation on it in, at work once. Like it's a very important season to the human experience. I, I agree. suggest anyone should watch BB15. But in reality TV, okay, I have so many questions. But my first question is like, what neighborhoods of reality TV do you like? Because there's a lot of reality TV out there, but like, are you a dating show girl? Are you like a life, like, you know, like a true life kind of girl? Like what's, what's your, what are your neighborhoods that you like in reality TV? I feel like it's hard because I feel like my like intro to reality TV as like, I mean, we we're 96 baby. So what, I'm 26 going on 27 right now. Um, so we grew up in like, the era where reality TV was at its best. Absolutely. And so like, it started with like, Flavor of Love, I Love New York. But then I also feel like as I like got older, I started tapping into like, the Jersey Shores of the world, mm -hmm. the real worlds, the challenge. And so, ugh. 
And then now, as like an adult, I've tapped into like the Love Islands. And so to me, I feel like I don't really know if it's about the neighborhood, mm-hmm. but I feel like it's more about the format. You you like watching real people be people try to be people on TV. Yeah, Which I think it's like because the thing about reality TV, right? It's like. I hate the person who's like, I don't like reality TV because it's not real. First of all, you're the idiot who ever thought something was wrong. Not that you ever thought, right? Because I actually didn't know. I didn't know reality TV was fake until I was like 17. But I got introduced to it at 14. So like, obviously, I was, wasn't supposed to know. But like, I feel like that the there is something so compelling about we're all interested in clout. We're all interested in uh, fame. We're all interested in being like recorded. You know, like I think when you put pe- real people in these situations where they become superstars, it's just compelling as fuck. And like, I really like it. Like, and it's like, yeah. So you you more like seeing how real people interact with like, I don't know, being famous out of nowhere. Is that what it and is? And I think it's also like, as much as like reality TV isn't real and it kind of like hints back to what we were talking about earlier today as we were drinking. Um, <laughs> Everyone is creating their own show in their head. Agree. Everyone Agree. is like creating the experience that they want to create. And reality TV just has like the help of a little bit of a producer behind the scenes. But like, you know, when people are like, there was that interview recently with, I feel like it was like Jessica Dime or something like that from Love and Hip Hop where she was Queen, like, I love her. Love her. Love Maybe it was hip-hop. Carly. No, it was uh, Masika. Masika? Masika? Masika. Masika. It was Masika. Masika. Wale's she- ex like side piece, basically, right? Yeah. She dated Wale? I'm a love and hip hop stan, and and on love and hip hop, one of her storylines was that she was like one of Wale's sweeties, and his main girlfriend didn't like her. So yeah, she at some point was involved with Wale, maybe just for TV, but she's not the main Wale girl. I forgot her name, but she's Fair not enough. the main Wale. But there was an interview where she was talking about how like you would show up, and the producer would be like, "You're gonna talk about this." And then she'd be like, "Okay," and she'd be like, "But you didn't know that the producers told them this, 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 and this." And I'm like. Yes, that's orchestrated, but that is also how real life works. It's real. Like, yeah. I can show up to a bar with my friends and I don't know that this person told this person something I said two weeks ago and the conversation's gonna play out the way it played out. Okay, but- what I will say, okay, two things. One, now that I'm thinking about it, I think actually Masika is Fetty Wops, like side piece. But Yes, that right? is, that's true. I think yes. she's Fetty Wops thing. What I also will say is, Tyla also lives her own reality show. So, like, maybe you didn't re- resonate with that. And that's because Tyla literally lives a reality show where it's, like, she meets, like, new guys. And, like, people know. Like, it's just, like, she is a celebrity in Brooklyn. It's beautiful. Oh, and it's amazing. You. And she was a celebrity in NYU. It's beautiful. Um, but it's true. Like, it's, like, that is, like, kind of what you do. And also, like, I just feel like the the idea of, like, reality TV is interesting because it's, like, it it. In the our society right now, there's not a lot of like places or times where you are meant to reflect on yourself. And I feel like reality TV is like the only space where people are reflecting on their true humanity in the sense of like dating or like how you treat people. I, I don't know. I, I feel like it's just a cool format. And a lot of people really like reject it or have a lot of feelings about it. But I do think it's like some of the most interesting content you can make. It's like putting real people in real situations. Like none of like nothing's real, but it's still it's still the closest to real, real that we can get. Yeah, it's recorded. You know what I mean? Like, and I also feel like not to get too meta on the mic, but I will get meta on meta on the mic. meta on the mic. I love that. Um, people who don't like reality TV are usually men or pick me women, and I'll say it. I'm thinking. And I think that's true. Because I think... I literally think that's true. Reality TV's major demographic is women. And, like... The girls and the gays. The girls and the gays. I think it's something about, like, I don't know, maybe, like, escapism or, like, validation. I don't know. I have to think more about that. But so many of the people who dislike it don't dislike it because they dislike the content. They dislike it because they don't like the perception that comes with liking it. I agree. Because as agree. any any girl out there who like dates cishet men can say, you put fucking Love Island on next to a man, they will talk shit for the first 20 minutes and then the next 20 minutes they're asking you why she's acting like that towards uh. this person and what happened in the episodes that they didn't see because everybody is interested in seeing real world dynamics play out. Like even if we're if we're not watching reality TV, we're doing it in real life. Like the way people like to people watch, that's just reality TV, but without a camera. You're right, without a producer. And it's also true, it's like, I can't express this enough. Like as a young 
gay person in a non-gay space, reality TV was the only arena where I saw romantic dynamics play out. Exactly. And, like, I, I also was thinking about this, and I, like, okay, it's, like, this is a, a good segue, because I was thinking about this, and I know that you also are a massive, we share a very close, one of our favorite reality TV shows, which is Jersey Shore. Ugh. Um, And I hadn't realized until maybe two or three years ago how much Jersey Shore had shaped my perception of relationships, of going out, of adulthood. It's actually crazy because it's like, you know, like, obviously we watch things and things are a part of us, but, like, reality TV really, like, was the only place that I knew that, like, where I could, like, have a peek into what adults were doing. Like, we're actually doing. Like, movies don't show you, like, movies are not real, obviously. And reality TV isn't that real, but, but it's, like... it is, kind of. It is people reacting real. Like, the storyline and, like, the actual plot points might be produced, but... It really is people react. Especially reacting. Jersey Shore. And I think that Especially that's why it was such Shore. a pivotal Especially. show is because I feel like before Jersey Shore, most of reality TV was like dating based. Like the Flavor of Love, the I Love New York's, the, the Shot of Love and with Tequila Tequila. Yeah. Overly produced. And like Jersey Shore was literally just like we took a bunch of random fucking people that we found on MySpace mm. and dropped them in a house and said, ah, let's see what happens. And it was like... All of the good, all of that, like, seeing, obviously, this is probably very traumatic for her. And Snooki, I really hope you see this one day because I Snooki, literally would welcome die for you. Any day. Um, but, like, watching Snooki get punched as, like, a teenage girl, like, I was like, yo, there are actually, like, that was, like, my first introduction to, like, how male insecurity and male violence can, like, mm, play out wow. in, like, your real life. You know what I mean? And now, as an adult... When I'm out in the bars and I see men that are like that, that are like super insecure and have fragile masculinity and are super volatile, I think back to Miss Snooki and I'm like, let me skedaddle because this man is liable to punch anyone in the face. Right. But like, I just feel like it was one of the first shows that I watched outside of the real world that was really just like, these are how people react. And I think the real world had a lot of emphasis on partying. I think it was not necessarily our generation because it started so long ago. Yeah. So I feel like Jersey Shore was kind of our version of the real world, just like a hyper-specific focus. But even, like, I say this all the time when we go out and we're, like, out in Bushwick, uns unsing. I'm like, we are Snooki and Dina. Like, I am Jersey turnpiking right now on this dance floor. And 14-year-old me used to dream about the day <laughs> when I would be able to be blackout drunk with my friends face down, ass up. And, like, I'm doing it now. And, like... And they were right about that is the peak of life. It like, is. There's nothing more special. Five vodka crayons deep and shaking your ass is all that we were put on this earth to, to do. Before. Like, there is a reason why there are Jersey Club dance mixes to everything because that is the spice of life. It is. And I, I also think that, like, that's something great you said was about... Fuck, I just forgot what you said. I don't know. I say a lot of things. No, you just said something so brilliant. Oh, you said something uh, brilliant about um, the fact that, like... <laughs> the, the vodka's kicking our ass right now. I'm literally so hot, and I'm like... <laughs> yes. Let me go back to my questions. Would you go on a reality TV show? Absolutely, in a heartbeat, if there's ever a oh, this is exciting. person out there who's watching this, because I think that they will, because Trey's amazing. Um, and someone important will watch this. And if you were ever looking for a friend group to cast, it's the hotties. It is. It is <laughs> us. The hotties. It is us. We have enough stuff going on. We have enough, like, and also enough of us are ready to get crazy for camera. Like, <laughs> it'll, it'll be. We get beautiful. crazy enough in our real life. I promise you, you give me a little check. Maybe I'll act very strange for some change. I'm just kidding, mom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so would you go on, would you rather go on a competition show or a dating show? Girl, look at me. I'm not getting in nobody's mud. <laughs> <laughs> I, sometimes I watch the challenge and I like look at my like favorite girlies and I'm like, I like try and think about like who I would be on the challenge and I would be a person who politics. Like I would yeah. simply just be cute and like maybe kiss a boy or two to get as close to the finale as possible and like lean into my like, oh, I'm just so bad at everything and that's why you want me in the final so you could beat me type of girl. I just couldn't. I'm not going to do it. I don't even like walking to the train. I feel like maybe you wouldn't do the challenge, but like you could do a big brother because all the comps, like the comps aren't like 
Some of them are like, you know, you have to be a fucking like Navy SEAL to do it. But some of them are just like, you have to either be smart or like, there's like, Big Brother is one of the reality shows that I feel like it's the only show where you, anyone could probably win it because it's a show that is very based on a lot of different skills the challenge is like you just gotta be fucking brolic like you have to have have some physicality and like or you're a layup which i'll be that girl what's a layup which basically like kind of like what i said where it's just like you're a person where it's like oh i'm gonna bring this person to the finale not because i think they're an asset Uh, but because i think i can beat them to win which i'll be there and then i'll (laughs) I'll do that (laughs) i'll do that yeah i'll do that i i also like i i feel like i would love to be on a lot of reality tv but for some reason, I my main mental block comes from dating shows. And I feel like dating shows have yes. brought reality TV back in a way that has, like, reality TV was really, really, really popular from, like, what, let's say, like, 2001 to, like, 2012. 12, yeah. Right? And then the second recession hit, and everyone was like, okay, stop. <laughs> and then, <laughs> I was like, nobody but cares. Love Island, uh, single hand, in my opinion, Love uh, Island single handedly brought back the appeal of mass reality TV because now every dating show is a love show. No, wait, what did I say? Every reality show is a dating <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Again, Tito's is in the room. <laughs> every reality show is a dating show. Yes. And like, but I, I it's weird because it's like, I love reality TV shows. I love TV. I don't love dating shows, but I think I would if I like watched the right one. I did watch one season of Love Island, the one with Kim. Amber, sorry, spoiler alert, they won. But Kim and Amber was like UK season five. No. No. Three, I believe. Okay, that's the only one I've seen. That's the one with Olivia Attawood as well. My queen, if you ever come across this, literally would die for you. Okay, so tell me and the people of Prattle, what is the draw of Love Island? Because it is the biggest cultural phenomenon in recent history. And I, I am a person who I love trends. I love things that are popular. And I just don't think I get it. So what is the draw of Love Let Island? Let me get on my fucking Love Island soapbox. Oh, <laughs> get into it. my. Talk about India and all of them. God, I love that show. One, I think Love Island is such an interesting microcosm about real life. And I think that is the appeal, but also the downfall as a black Love Island watcher. Like, mm. it is very much so, like, the black women get picked by the black men. If you don't, you go home. Or you have, like, a white boy that picks you for a little bit and then a blonde girl comes in and then you go home. Like, <laughs> that is, like, a really interesting microcosm of just, like, what dating is life is like in real life. Like, in terms of, like, race and, like, respectability and stuff like that. Um, but I think... Also, I like I to say that I love that you like seeing the real. Because, like, I feel like a lot of people don't like it because it is, like, hard to see. But it's, like... Listen, if it's happening in life, I want to see it on TV. And it's kind and of it's cool validating. Like, and it, Right, right. That's like the most beautiful black goddess in the world will still be paid dust by nature of patriarchy like, and white supremacy. If you were a Love Island UK girly, because obviously that's the best one, Yawande season five, gorgeous, gorgeous queen. Got played out by what? A probable biracial man, I think. Sorry, <laughs> probable Danny. Probable biracial is crazy. But I'll take it. <laughs> Sorry, Danny. Part of Destiny's Childish, which is like what they call all of the like fuck boy like skins on that show. <laughs> Destiny Childish is so funny. That's Played out by this man because a tall blonde girl came in. when like, And it just was wild to see because she was so gorgeous and so dedicated and so sweet and just like the microcosm of life that like makes it be like, oh, okay, it's not me. This is just, like, what it really is. That's the cards dealt, yeah. And I think there's just something really special about a show that is simply based on you live in a house and there are cameras everywhere. I agree. It's different than, I think, the real world because the real world and, like, the Jersey Shore is, like, you see the camera people following you. You have to be very hyper aware of the fact that they're always there. Whereas in Love Island, majority of the time, like, the cameras are like hidden in bushes or like up on a thing. Like they oh, don't. So they're like just vibing. They're and just living. in a house vibing. Like they're not looking at the cameraman all the time. Wow. And I feel like it adds another level of like authenticity or like. And it kind of sucks because like earlier seasons, you know, Offcom was a little more lax. I think now that it's so popular, which is like Britain's version of like, I don't know what ours is called, but they like control what you can show on TV. Mm. They used to be a lot more lax in the earlier seasons. So like season one, People used to just be fucking, like, on on top, not even under the covers, on top of the sheets. And they share one big bedroom, babes. Like, just fucking, like, the person in the bed next to them would be like, okay, girl. Like, you know, yeah. smoking cigarettes, sitting there talking shit. But it was like, yeah, this is what dating is like, you know? Or, like, there's a really, 
and again, sorry, if you haven't watched earlier seasons of Love Island, maybe like mute this for the next couple of minutes. There was this scene where there was this girl, I believe her name is Zara. She was a beauty queen and she was on there and was respectable, sweet, amazing the entire time. One guy came in and she was like dealing with heartbreak or whatever. Like she was just sad, I think, and like wanted some validation. She like hooked up with him. And then when it aired, like two episodes later, they stripped her of her title. That's so scary. That's insane. That's but crazy. as a girl who is like very much like, I just want to live my life or whatever, it was like watching the way that women are perceived in real life, like on a show. Like I was like, this girl is doing what literally everybody else is doing. These right. men stick their dicks anywhere. And it's like, ah, that's just what the boys do. And she had one, she didn't even sleep with him. I'm pretty sure she just gave him head. Like it wasn't even anything that deep. And she was vilified for also, it. Also, the even the presence of slut shaming on a show that is dedicated to dating is crazy. crazy. Like the, everyone's there to date. And, and it like, happens all the time. Like one of the more recent seasons, there's this girl named Tasha and people hated Tasha. Again, if you're watching this, Tasha, I love you. People hated her. And the only reason was that she was a cute girl. And like people would come in the house and be like, I want to take Tasha on a date. And she... First of all, you don't have a choice, which was always the crazy part. You can't choose to not go if someone chooses. That is pretty crazy. So she would go on the dates, enjoy herself, talk to the people, and be like, no, I like my man. People were like, she's playing him. She's out here playing the field, and he's only dedicated to her. Love you, Andrew, but it's not It's not her fault that nobody <laughs> wanted to take him out. <laughs> Andrew, biggest man. But, like, you know what I mean? She's a hot girl on a show that's about finding your perfect partner, and she's met you first. You might not be her perfect partner. Like, like yeah. Here's the question, though. Would you fuck someone mic'd up and on camera? I do a lot of things <laughs> all the time. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I could say old Love Island and like old reality TV, I think I would be a little more cautious just because I know that they used to show everything. But I don't think, like if I was like living in like Jersey Shore and it was one of those nights we were like at the club and like there was someone hot, I probably couldn't stop myself from like a little under the cover hookup. Yeah, actually, no, there's no context needed. Yes, I would totally. Do it. <laughs> I probably wouldn't be like as brazen as like the first or second Love Island season. They were like fucking on top of covers, like just out there. But girl. And also, again, you got to remember the cameras are not there in the smush room on Jersey Shore. Like the cameraman is not standing in the yeah, room. Yeah. It's a mounted camera. Like, you're out, you're drinking, you're having fun with your friends. Like, you're not going to remember. Or I don't think in the moment yeah, you're not going to think feel... about the fact that, like, you're uh, being filmed. Yeah, I, I think that, like, and I also know, like, as someone who I love filming everything and I love, like, putting cameras on. So I do know there was a there was a period in my life, my senior year of college, where I was, like, blogging and filming everything. And it's true. If you put a camera up in a corner and put it up, people forget about it in Five in minutes. seconds. It's kind of crazy. Like, so I could see, my, but I don't know. Like, in my mind, I think, well, I think it's because since I'm such a fame and uh, clout minded person, I would always think about what I'm like putting when I'm on a show. That's what I think, but maybe it's a little bit different. And like, would I fucking on camera with a mic? I don't know. I, I just feel like I I don't know. But I also I just say unmic them when they go in bedrooms. I, I think it would definitely like. Well, girl, that's gonna sound worse on the mic than anything else. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm more. I think I would be more. I, I I yeah. It's funny. I think my apprehension to fucking on camera is not that people would see. It's more if people would have like notes. Like <laughs> I, I feel a little bit more trust, but I think no one would have notes about my. But also, neck it's like I think. And again, this may be like just the brain, the, the way that my brain works. I would be like, they're going to edit this. Like, they're not going to, they're not just going to put. Never, I, one thing about me, I would never, ever trust a reality TV producer because at the end of the day, you need things that make people think, which yes. means they are. But here's the thing, though. But they're not going to put the 40 minutes of me fucking on the screen. You know what I mean? Well, they will not. But I remember so clearly. So one of the other shows and seasons that we watched together a lot was real world new orleans and this was with fine ass tony oh my god but, tony is and one to of be the very specific this is real world new orleans skeletons not the first one with jemmy and knight i am a little crazy about the real world this is the one where they brought in people from the past and fucked their lives up with tony reigns who again if you're watching this tony 
<laughs> Tony. <laughs> like, Tony, baby. <laughs> no matter what you want, no matter what you like, there's someone for you on this couch. On this couch. <laughs> and I love your wife and your kids so dearly. <laughs> oh. <sighs> I'm happy about it, I guess. Um, but okay, thank you for saying that because I actually was I I was. Uh, mixing seasons because I was about to say Tony, Knight, and Gemma. But I will say, I guess I'll only say uh, whatever season had Ryan on it, which I think was Knight and Gemma. So not Tony's season. But the original Real World New Orleans had Knight and Gemma and Ryan. I remember so specifically there was like a, because I didn't have a credit card at this time because I was like fucking 14. And if you like had an extra subscription, you could see the unedited set. I believe, I don't think this is true. By the way, everyone, I have to say this. I've said a lot of things. I've been reading and watching and editing the other episodes. <laughs> I just be talking. <laughs> so I don't know how true this is, but in my mind, when I was a 14 year old, they were like, if you pay for the subscription, you could see. I feel like you're thinking of Big Brother. Maybe I am. And you know, honestly... Because Big Brother has the live feeds that you can pay for. That's true. Maybe I am. But you're right. So maybe, like, yeah, I guess you would... You, it's probably pretty okay to feel like you're, sex, you're not having a sex tape. But even then, it's just still a storyline of, like, I don't know. I think my mom would die if I had sex on TV. I but. mean, oh, don't get me wrong. Avis would be pissed at me. <laughs> but I think it's just, like... I don't know. Just like the type of girly that I am is just like, it's a part of life. You know what I mean? And like, oh, because it's not on camera. You think I'm not fucking? Like, girl, we all are. So I'm going to do it on the show and I'm going to be under some covers and y'all are going to cut scene in like two seconds. So what do you think is the best season of Love Island? There's so many franchises, so many seasons. What's the best? This was not a difficult question at all. Oh. Love Island, UK, season five, Amber Gill, once again, I know you're in a happy relationship, but you are a lesbian now, and I love you. Um, love Island, season five, UK, is one of the best seasons of reality TV ever made in the history of television. Yeah, you're first. Oh, my God. There is drama. There is romance. There's betrayal. There's heartbreak. There is redemption. You have a winner. Again, love you, Amber. Should not have won at all. <laughs> you and that man had no connection whatsoever. You and Greg, where is Greg now? We don't know. Greg's irrelevant. Greg was simply just a, a player in the game that Amber won. And she won off of the strength of the entire United Kingdom saying, we are not going to watch this girl get played out. We are going wow. to let her know that we love her. Ugh, what? This is the season that I'm always like, no, we have to watch it together. Because there are so many moments from that show that I literally have clips saved on my phone from the last time a nigga played me out. And I saved them on my phone and I posted them on my Instagram story to be petty because there's a moment from that show that applies to every experience of life. It is so good. Wait, tell us about this moment. Oh, uh, okay. So, boom. You have gorgeous, gorgeous queen, Anna. She's dating pretty mid at the time of the season. Very sexy now, Jordan. Um, he... He upgraded, um, but they he asked her to be his girlfriend, and then after like they had gone through turmoil, like Casa Moore happened. You know what Casa Moore is? That's when they can fuck. No, oh. close. Good guess. Oh, that's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Casa Moore is like this twist that they started adding, where basically like so in Love Island, obviously you all live in a house. They made this twist where they will like secretly take all of the girls or secretly take all of the guys and put them in a different house, wow. and then bring in a whole other set of people. So like all of the girls will be in one house, all of the guys will be in one house and they'll bring in girls for all of the guys so and guys for all of the girls. And then at the end, it's only like a week. And at the end, you have to decide if you're going to stay with the person you were coupled up with in the original house or if you're going to couple up with a new person that they brought in and nobody knows what the other person is doing. When I tell you I could literally never, ever be online, I would be sick. Like, and it's like, I would that brings some of the best moments of the show because imagine like it's like logic and love and strategy like okay i like this person but do i think this person is going to play me out am i going to bring someone back because i think they no. chose someone else like mm. uh so anna had already like come back from casa more with another man and like her and jordan still reconciled and that other man had moved on with this girl named india jordan decides he likes india all of a sudden two days after he asked anna to be his girlfriend Ooh. And pulls her to the side to have a chat. Jordan is stupid and doesn't realize that as much as men think they can't. <laughs> You're so bad. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, babes, when I start talking about Love Island, the accent just comes out. Um, 
Jordan's dumb and doesn't realize as much as men trust each other, men love to gossip with their girls even more. So Jordan tells Curtis, I think I like India. I'm going to talk to her about it. Curtis, being the messy pillar talker that he is, tells his girl Mora, Jordan likes India, and he's going to tell her. Mora is a real ass bitch. Mora goes to Anna and is like, girl, your man is out here playing you. Anna gives the most iconic drag of all time on that show. Literally, like, this screaming in his face, like, two days. And that season also was so special because it was one of the seasons that had such strong female characters and such, like, solidarity between the women that, like, it wasn't just Anna cursing him out. It was Anna. It was Mora. It was Amber. Even queen of politics, Miss Molly May. That's the season with Molly May and Tommy Ferry, by the way. Molly May was in the corner, like, very important to British culture. Um, Molly May was on the corner like, yeah, girl, that was crazy. And I think that's one of the most exciting parts about modern reality TV because it's like, for sure, when it started, reality TV was set out to destroy women. Like, it was like, <laughs> literally, it was for sure uh, like a, a tool of patriarchy like no other. I will never forget when Angelina showed up at Jerry Shore house and they were like, you showed up in trash bags, you fucking dirty hamster. <laughs> you I'm like, dirty little whoa. Slut. Like, whoa. But like it's cool the grenade it's, whistle, like, <laughs> the grenade, the grenades. It's a concept. It's insane. But the um, but the fact that like now it's like the girlies are like team. Like that sounds so beautiful. It was like, honestly it. one of the best. See, it's simply because of that. Is because like, and I think especially in dating shows, so much of it is like the stereotypical like girls being hopeless romantics and like guys like playing the field. And I feel like this season was so good because it was full of women who were like. You're not going to fucking play me. You're not going to act like that. And if you oh, are, I'm going to curse you out in front of national television. And everyone's going to be on my side. And it's so kind. And as a girl who loves to curse men out, it was very valid. <laughs> I was like, yeah, we actually should curse them out more. Like, we should do that. I feel like, again, to all casting producers watching, because I know you're watching, <laughs> Tyla would be such a beautiful, amazing guest. Because not only does she live reality TV in her own life, like she would give you the sound bites, and you would you would also not take shit. Reality TV is the best when people don't take shit. I and agree. like you are a good communicator, you're a good caller outer, and I think you'd be like actually gorgeous on any reality TV set, especially a love show. Like yeah, no one's ha like I need no one's touching you. Like I would love you to be the bachelorette, but that's like the wrong show. Like you're not yeah. you don't need to be. I I would love a show where like twenty five men are like literally quarreling and fighting and killing each other to, like, be with you. But, like, ABC's <laughs> not it. Like, you need to be on, like, a Love Island, a like, a Hulu Netflix love show. But I would Netflix only show. do Love Island UK because I think Love Island US is super corny because of our TV rules. Like What's I, our TV rules? Also, I thought we were crazier. Like I can't. No. Oh, my God. Not at all. They can curse as much as they want on Love Island UK. You we say, can curse on the US? You like, can't say fuck on TV. Oh, yeah. On, like, cable television. Oh, yeah. Like, you need, like, an HBO yeah, subscription for that. I didn't know it aired like that. Yeah. Okay, sorry. And so I would need to be somewhere where I could curse someone out freely. Okay, tell me about the impact that Love Island Georgia Shore have had on you. It's like we were 14, like, watching the... Mm, They're not going to want me to talk about this, but we were 14 watching the Snooki Vinny love story play out and watching how mm -hmm. desirability mm -hmm. politics 100% played into the way Vinny treated her and how she was very much a little... Fatphobia. Fatphobia. The fact that, like, he was supposed to be a hot boy. The fact that, like, back then she was, like, a little bit of a bigger girl and with, like, in, like, real life standards was not big at all. But at all. Like, compared to, like, the I'm other sorry, little skinny girls. I'm sorry, anyone with a flat stomach is not... Yeah, like, big. Snooki was... I'm so sorry. They're hot not. back then. But he treated her, like, as we would say now, a sneaky link because there was some level of shame that came with, like, him being with her and I think watching that on TV and then growing up and then having that shit happen in real life and like being like oh like this is this is what it was like we're like these yeah. niggas were really in real life act like they don't fucking know who you are because they are so insecure in themselves and the way that they're going to be perceived that they can't just openly own the fact that they like somebody that maybe their friends wouldn't like um yeah. Yeah. Right. That's, I love me some Jersey Shore. I love Jersey Shore more than anything else, and I think it is the best. It is, and it's true because it's like, it is something so special because also what people don't, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but since I'm a Jersey Shore stan, I do know this, like, Jersey Shore was supposed to be Love Island. They were supposed to have a new crew of people every summer, and then when the first thing dropped, first of all, Jersey Shore became a hit instantly. Instantly. The first episode, and as soon as it dropped, everyone was, like, so enthralled and, like, engrossed in their personal stories that they couldn't do anything else, which is why I think Jersey Shore is enduring more than anything else because there's actually, 
no other reality show but the Kardashians that has a stock cast, right? I, that could be a lie. <laughs> I, that was a big statement, but it's that's not, a big deal. It's not a lie. Most other, I mean, you have like the Real Housewives one, but they still cycle oh, people I out forgot. though. But people I still forgot. get psyched. Like people, it's like, oh, you have a boring season, you're gone. Whereas like Vinny had that whole season where he was like, I am depressed. depressed. And they were like, depressed. you take your moment, babes, and you're back next season still. Like, you know, they were like. Season six. <laughs> season six was Hard. I didn't finish it. <laughs> it's hard. I didn't finish it. Um, I also think what's really fascinating about it is how quickly the turnaround time happens. Mm -hmm. And I don't think unless people are as obsessed with it as we are, people don't realize how fast they filmed so much of Jersey Shore. Yeah. Like season two and three, there's no break between them. No. Like they went to Italy and then came back to Jersey and like filmed like two weeks later. Like they just- They went to Italy because it was winter in America and they went to Italy. And by the time they were done filming that, it wasn't that cold back in Jersey. Season three is back at the Shore House. Uh, no, season five is back at the Shore House. Four is Italy and then five, they're back. Yes, Even two between, is Miami and No, three but, is but they went to Miami because Jersey was cold. So like they went from like one, it was, the, it was a little break, the biggest hit ever. Two was Miami. Then they went back to three for Jersey, and then went straight to Italy for four. Like they were like, we are and putting five and six was fucking content out, and like it, it is not only good. And again, this may just be like the way that my brain works. Is like an incredibly hyper analytical person. It is not only good from like the people standpoint of like there's the most interesting crop of people that they've ever had, but in terms of like marketing and like the people behind that show were so fucking tapped in sally they and said, Salsano. sally and you will I always you be famous you will life. always be famous sister my <laughs> she life. had her finger on the fucking pulse and she said no people want to see this and you bitches are gonna work for your check she said y'all are gonna film year round for like three years straight and we're gonna give the people what they want and they're all millionaires now because of get it, in the so. booth kid with beautiful <laughs> fucking houses okay we Literally need maybe two more hours of this, but we <laughs> Literally so just do three episodes. We reality. really do. So we're going to get into some segments as we wrap up. Like, this has been literally such a great... So this is the Prattle Rattle Off. This is where I rattle off a bunch of questions. You're going to... No. <laughs> <laughs> Tito's is in the room. Everyone's still drunk. <laughs> this is the Prattle Rattle Off, where I'm going to ask a bunch of questions that are vaguely reality-based. Some of them are random, but most of them are reality-based. And you're going to rattle off your answers, okay? Oh God, okay. Wait. Alcohol. Okay. I'm ready. Let me hit my vape first. All right. Number one, name a rapper you'd want to have a, a storyline with on Love and Hip Hop. Jack Harlow. <laughs> what? <laughs> Anti blackness what? is in the space. I'm first sorry. Of all, okay, now that she said that, let me say this. Central C. Oh my God, wait, no, I take <laughs> no, it back. I take no, it back. Central, Central C. C, babe, if you're watching this, I know Maddie could no. never do for you what I do for you, babe. Never. That's crazy. That's Just a white girl. Then when she was asked and she was pressed, she didn't say you and I would. I thought we were talking about US, babe. You should have said international. I said rapper. You okay, should have thought <laughs> <laughs> Who is a celebrity you think you could chew up in a reality show style screaming match? Um, Love you down, Kim K. Wow, getting in the ring with a angry white girl. I love that. That's very bold, <laughs> but I think you could do it. Actually, no, I, I'm changing my Kardashian Courtney. Courtney's too emotional. I think I'd eat Courtney up. Yeah. Because I can get a little nasty like him. <laughs> love you, girl. Favorite quote from reality TV? Um, I want my eggs cracked. <laughs> Meaning I want a child. I, I want, want my, my name, name dropped. dropped. Meaning, Meaning I, I want to be married. married. I'm, I'm not, not your fucking bed maiden. <laughs> I'm not your bed maiden. <laughs> I am not your bluesy. I'm not... Fucking around with you. I love New York. Anything she says. Tiffany New York Pilot is the queen. The queen. Um, most evil character from reality TV. Oh, that's really hard. Wow, that's really fucking difficult. I thought you were going to say off jump Johnny Banana. That is actually what popped into my head, but I don't want to give him that satisfaction because I think that is what makes that's him what feel wants. like he's so important. That's what he wants. Um, but he is up there, and I would say a like surprising close second is probably Michael from season five of Love Island because I just think that he was so nasty to Amber and was like the definition of a gaslighter. And then when he realized that Amber was popular, he tried to like crawl back and was like, Ew, uh, fuck out of here. Yeah, choke, bitch. Exactly. Hate him. And finally, if your life has been secretly filmed and each year was a season, which season would you be most afraid for people to see? Oh my God. Um, 
literally my sophomore year of college and the summer that came after it was such a spooky spooky time in my life. Like I that wa- was I <laughs> want to see that season. That I was that season. study abroad. Scary. That was mm, I was about to say names here, girl. That was hey. <laughs> <laughs> Only their day. <laughs> that was the no, summer. Give me aliases. I don't know that was the summer where I was with that man. Mm, yeah, um, I know the man. Yeah, that was yes. the summer I was with that man, and yes. I was just out here high as hell, posting him on Instagram all the time. Lord, that was a spooky, ooky time. And if you stuck around through that, you're a real one. You are a writer, and thank you. <laughs> That's honestly beautiful. <laughs> honestly, everyone, thank. You. Oh, not everyone. Tyla. <laughs> Okay, Tyler, thank you so, so much for coming on to the podcast. One of my best, closest friends of all life. So thank you all so much for listening. If you did as well, I'm realizing that we need more time. Like, I feel like we literally could have gone two more hours on this, but I only paid for one. So <laughs> we're about to get out. We're booked and busy, babes. We've thank got to go. <laughs> thank you so much for listening to another episode of Proud of a Trey Rain. And I can't wait to dive into more obsessions and topics going forward. That was not, the, wait, let me actually read that. <laughs> that was not the outro. I'm going to say, and I'm also going to maybe always or never be drunk again. Who knows? <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. I am so excited to delve into upset. Nope. Thank you all so much for watching. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for watching. I am so excited to delve into the obsessions of some fucking cool people. I should not curse. <laughs> you know what? I'll see y'all next it's week. Over. I love you so much. And thank you for listening to Prattle. It means the world. And thank you for being here. And, and scene. And <laughs> fucking scene. Let's go. We got to get out. Okay, thank you so much. I love you. Bye. Good night. We should do that every day. We need to do that every week.